Alrighty, hey everyone. So this is Garrison, and let's take a look at this 2014 Wrangler Unlimited Sahara. It is going to be the anvil clear coat with the black cloth interior and black soft top. But after 118,000 miles, it stayed within the same family. So let's get some ownership remarks here from the owner. Um, prior to this, he had an 07 Wrangler, but that's as much speaking for him as I'll do. How does this compare to your 07? Well, it's a lot bigger in space and it does a lot better in MPG. But to my knowledge about cars, that's all I really know. All right. So I guess we'll hop back in the video and kind of see how this one has held up after 118,000 miles. So coming up front here, obviously six years of age, you do kind of have to spruce up the, the black plastic around the vehicle. Thankfully, those fenders are color coordinated, that anvil clear coat, so you don't have to polish those too much. But as you can see, you do have the black plastic on bumper. He's done a couple different things to try and keep it black. We've tried olive oil. His dad has blowtorched it before, just various methods. Um, obviously, it's just kind of a reoccurring thing. Sun is going to make plastics age. But as you can see, speaking of the sun, the headlights haven't oxidized too much. They're still pretty clear. You have those fog lights as well. And then coming around here, these are going to be riding on Toyo Open Country tires. These are new tires that he just got a few weeks ago. These are going to be P275-55R18. So these are going to be the 18-inch Sahara wheels. Um, Four-wheel disc brakes, of course, Sahara badging. And with this being the soft top, this is going to be the original top as well. It's holding up well, pretty tight. Um, his 07 had an aftermarket top that was pretty loose. And so I think if he did have to replace it, he would probably either go a hard top route or the OEM route for sure. And then coming around back, even the rear tire got tire shine. So as you can see, that is going to be the matching spare. But we'll go ahead and hop in this one. That's about it as far as the exterior goes. No real, no big wear and tear. There is a little, a little rust spot right over here, but with not being in the sand belt, that's really no worries. That's not going to bubble or anything like that. But hopping in, as you can see, that black cloth interior just did get a full detail. So recent shampoo, vacuum, wash, wax, all of that. So it's looking nice and shiny from all that armor all. As you can see, that exact mileage is going to be 118,758. Starts right up, no issues at all. But we'll go ahead and check out underneath the hood. So coming underneath the hood, you do have the tried and true 3.6 liter V6. This is going to be the FCA Pinastar unit. It is in so many of their products. Um, tried and true, these are pretty reliable engines. Um, just keep oil in them and they, they're pretty happy. That was the issue that my other friend had. He couldn't keep oil in it, so obviously it blew up. But these do push out around 285 horsepower, 260 foot-pounds of torque are going to a five-speed automatic that is optional up until I think it was around the 2017 mark was when we changed over to the GAL. Of course, someone will correct me. Um, but these also are optioned with a six-speed manual if you do want that. And then all through the rear wheels with a part-time four-wheel drive system. So pretty bulletproof powertrain other than a couple oil leaks, which is pretty common on Wrangler models. I know that this family in particular has had oil leaks on their 04, 07, and this 14, and so it's nothing new for them. They just kind of keep a quart of oil in the trunk and keep it topped off before a road trip or two. But we will check out the interior now. So let's hop back inside. And as you can see, it's going to be a six-way manual driver's seat right here with the Sahara cloth. As you know, Saharas are optional with leather as well. Door panel, not much on the door just because, as you know, these do come off. So you've just got your power locks and then some netting down there. Hopping in though, Sahara is going to give you the leather up steering wheel. So as you can see, leather wrapping, audio controls on the back with cruise and some trip odometers right here. Automatic headlights, panel dim as well as your variable intermittent speed wipers over here. As far as your head unit goes, this is something that's going to be changed fairly soon. Um, this just does have the basic head unit right here. I think it's the seven speaker premium head unit that you do get in the um, Sahara, all of the Sahara trims for 2014. So you do have you do have satellite in this one as well as auxiliary. I, I can't figure out Bluetooth. I don't think this one has Bluetooth. That might have been a 2015 thing. But coming down here, of course, do all your power windows. Front two are automatic. Your single zone manual climate control auto was optional. You do have your power mirrors right over here. You do have your heated seats as well as hill descent and your power outlet. 
that four wheel drive transfer case that you can, or not transfer case, but transfer gear that you would um, kind of pull back in, in the instance of wanting to go four by four. And here's that five speed automatic, your manual shift mode, reverse, no rear view backup camera in this model, um, but it does give you the leather shifter and chrome shift knob that the Sahara has. Over here, of course, you do have that power outlet and two tier storage, so no problems there. Um, nice little glove box as well. Up top, way different than the hard tops that my friend previously had before. A little bit more road noise, but obviously you have the flexibility of just kind of throwing the, the roof back. But we'll go ahead and turn it off. Don't want to waste too much gas. And then coming back here, as you can see, with this being the unlimited, this is the reason you get this one. So it's got a little bit more space back here, two extra doors, seating for two extra people. And then you do have your window switches right over there. No real issues back here. I do notice the backrest is a little vertical, so probably not the best road trip car, um, but that's not why you buy a Wrangler. This one is, of course, the trail rated model, but I'd have to say it is a pavement princess other than maybe a couple beach trips here and there, maybe a gravel road. As you can see, the owner's not quite the biggest off-roader, but at least it does look cool. Um, other than the oil leak, there is an issue with the, it's either the clock spring or a wheel speed sensor that makes a ABS light and a traction control light come on. Just with the new um, beefier tires, you do get a little bit worse MPG. I know that just about wraps it up for a 118,000 mile ownership review of the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sahara. I think I've squeezed about all the information I can out of the previous owner over here. So uh, that just about wraps it up. But if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I can harass them a little bit more and, and squeeze more information out of them maybe. But other than that, look forward to seeing you in my next video.